संधान ऑल गुजरात इंटीग्रेटेड क्लासरूम सैटेलाइट ना माध्यम थी जोड़ती कड़ी इतले संधान हाय आई एम प्रोफेसर उन्नत बी पटेल एंड आई एम वर्किंग एज असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर एंड हेड ऑफ कम्युनिकेशन स्किल्स डिपार्टमेंट एट यू वी पटेल कॉलेज ऑफ इंजीनियरिंग विच इज ए कंस्टिट्यूएंट इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ गणपत यूनिवर्सिटी अ हाई टेक एजुकेशन कैम्पस हेज कम अप नियर मेहसाना एट केरवा टूडे आई एम गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट सिंटेक्स दैट इज वर्ड ऑर्डर इन इंग्लिश वॉट इज सिंटेक्स बिफोर वी गो टू सिंटेक्स इट वुड बी अप्रोप्रिएट टू अंडरस्टैंड Why syntax is important? Language is a product of a culture, and it is very important for a learner of a language to know how words get arranged when any idea is expressed orally. Syntax, in this sense, is a comprehensive study of different rules. governing the way in which words are combined to form sentences in a given language the concept of structure exists in every language and there prevails a very very apparent difference in the way words are arranged in different languages when we use gujarati language and when we use english language the idea may be the same but the arrangement of words is different in gujarati and english that's why it will be useful to the students to the learners to have clear cut understanding of what are the syntactical rules that english language follows when we frame sentences language is made up of words words get arranged in a specific order and this is how a sentence is created if there is any disorder that means if words are not properly arranged then the listener or the reader would not get adequate understanding of the idea or there will prevail some sort of misunderstanding in the listener or the reader regarding the idea expressed hence to have clear cut understanding of syntactical rules is very important let us see let us start with definition of syntax syntax is the study of the rules governing the way words are combined to form sentences in a language this is a general definition of syntax and this applies to every language in other words it can also be said that what syntactic structure is and what the rules that determine syntactic structure are like so syntax is the study of that let us try to understand this with an example look at the following sentence the sentence is set on mom's lap the cat if someone speaks or writes a sentence in this way in this fashion then the listener or the reader would not understand the idea completely there would prevail some sort of confusion because the words are not in specific order the words are not in desirable order the sentence doesn't make sense because whenever we listen whenever we read any idea then our mind decodes the words and the entire idea in a specific way if there is some flaw if there is some error if there is some mistake then 
there would prevail some sort of misunderstanding. The mind of the reader, the mind of the listener would not accept that idea. The same occurs here when you listen or read one such sentence, set on mom's lap the cat. If the idea is expressed this way, then it is difficult to understand what the speaker, what the writer wants to convey. So, there is a need to reframe the sentence by arranging the words properly. And it can be reframed like this, the cat sat on mom's lap. When you heard it in the previous version, it was difficult to make out any meaning out of it. Because the moment we listen the words, first two, three words, then our mind starts wandering because no such structure is stuffed there in the mind. So, the mind tries to compare this structure with the existing structures which are copied in mind over a period of time but it does not find anything parallel to what is heard and that is why the listener, the reader cannot comprehend any meaning out of it. That is why correct word order is a very, very essential need when we use language. There are some more examples. Cat I like to watch my play. The sentence is to be reframed like, I like to watch my cat play. Another example, the fox her kid takes care of. Again, there is disorder in the arrangement of words. The sentence has to be corrected and its corrected version would be, the fox takes care of her kid. One more example. Big dog, the is. The corrected version is the dog is big. Hit the ball I can. Try to rearrange the words. The example is hit the ball I can. The corrected version is I can hit the ball. One last example. The feet kept my dad's head. It must be happening that when you listen to these words, you get trapped and you start, you are so confused, you start making out some meaning out of it. But the whole exercise ends futile. The corrected version is the kept feet my dad's why it is important to learn about the word order? Because learning about word order will help you become a super writer, a super listener, a super speaker, a super reader. There are four basic skills of communication as we all are aware and in every skill the common component which is used is language. Either you are speaking or listening or reading or writing. Everywhere language is used and language either in oral form or written form follows the same rules and regulations. This is the reason why one has to have very clear understanding of word order or sentence. What is a sentence? A sentence is a group of words that tell a whole idea, but not only a group of words, a group of such words which are arranged in a specific order according to, according to the purpose with which the idea is being expressed. For example, if I want to acquire information. I have to ask a question. If I am looking for some person, Abraham, my friend, and if someone meets me on the way, what would I ask? Is Abraham in the studio? Here my purpose is 
to know to learn to be sure whether abraham is inside the studio or not present there this is the reason why i changed the word order and said is abraham in the studio if i have to pass on this information i am sure i i know that abraham is inside the studio and if someone is asking me and if i have to answer i would say abraham is in the studio see the same words are used but in the first one it was all about changing asking a question the intention was to acquire information in the second one i am passing on information i am supplying information so according to the purpose with which the idea is expressed the word order is also to be changed this is also very important a sentence starts with a capital letter this is very common a sentence ends with punctuation like a period or question mark in usage of language not only word order is important even having sufficient knowledge of punctuation marks various punctuation marks a period what we call full stop or what we say comma dash single inverted comma double inverted commas question mark exclamation mark knowledge of these punctuation marks is also very very essential a sentence has a naming part and an action part when we will we take a sentence it has two parts a naming part and an action part what do i mean to say when i say a naming part and an action part take an example rohit reads religious books in this sentence rohit is the naming part i begin i start with my idea with the name of something a name of someone rohit that is a naming part and the remaining part of the sentence i am supplying information about the action which is performed by the agent named in naming part rohit so what rohit is doing is indicated in the remaining part of the sentence so rohit is a naming part and the action part is reads religious books now when it comes to arranging words in specific order the most important thing the most essential thing is one must be aware of what types of words are used in language how many different types of words are there in language we call them parts of speech and you must have studied parts of speech in your previous year or even during your schooling education or higher secondary education as we know that language is comprised of words but all words are not similar take for example the word board this word board is used as an action and as well as it can be used as a name when i am talking about the board on which on which a teacher writes in class it's a board b o a r d even the same word board is used when we say that we boarded the ship here the word board is used as a verb so there are chances that the same word may be used differently in different sentences but if we take a word like person and if we take a word like walks then you will realize that the word person refers to human being so it is an identity of a human being when i say animal i am referring to non human and when i say walks then i am referring to the action action that is performed by the name that is suggested in this way person is not equal to walks both are words but both are different this can go on and on 
and we get several categories of words this knowledge is important because when you have to frame a sentence the structure will be provided in coded language in coded language means that you want to be asked that put the name of a person put the word that suggests action put a word that tells more something more about action no not like that you will be provided a structure in a coded language and these codes will be the names of different classes of words what we call them parts of speech what are parts of speech the classes of words created based on their function and location in the sentence are called parts of speech each part of speech explains not what the word is but also how the word is used so this basic knowledge this basic understanding of parts of speech would be helpful a lot and is also mandatory for proper understanding of syntax let's have a quick look at different parts of speech existing in english language in total there are these many different parts of speech noun verb pronoun adjective adverb preposition conjunction and interjection each part of speech explains not what the word is but how the word is used in fact the same word can be a noun in one sentence and a verb or adjective in the next when i gave the example of the word board the same thing happened that the word was used the word board was used at one place in one sentence as a noun and the other in the other it was used as a verb these are the parts of speech let us start with noun and verb what is a noun here we will go on defining that kind of words are nouns what kind of words are verbs what kind of words are adjectives and so on and so forth and thereafter you will get clear cut understanding that a word would be offered to you and you would say it is noun or it is verb or it is adjective or it is adverb so on the basis of the function that is performed by different words in a sentence we have created these classes what a noun does in a sentence a noun is a name of a person place or thing miss aruda is going to vegas this weekend in this example aruda and vegas are the nouns they refer to a person and a place respectively so noun are the words which are used as names of person places and objects simply you don't have to remain contented with this understanding you also have to list out that what words are there which are nouns you look around and see whatever things are there and make a list of all the things you have one word for each item that is in your surrounding and that word is a noun is an identity of either that place or person or object all those words are nouns coming to verbs a verb is what you do so a word in a sentence which talks about the action which shows the action is a verb i will run hope and skip down the track when you speak one such sentence in this sentence three words are used as verbs here i is performing three tasks running hoping and skipping these are three actions suggested by three distinct verbs so verbs are the words which indicate actions then comes pronouns and adverbs a pronoun can replace the noun or another pronoun which show do you want to see is an example i'll give you another example a pronoun is the word which replaces a noun in a sentence when we write an article a short passage about something or someone we name the person or place or thing just in the first sentence 
we say mahatma gandhi was a political leader of india then from the second sentence onward we do not repeat the word mahatma gandhi or mohan chand karam chand gandhi we start using he in place of the name of mahatma gandhi or mohan chand karam chand gandhi that word he is a pronoun and there are so many pronouns which we use in language in english language he she it they you i we all these are pronouns there are several classes of pronouns also but we would go in the details those detailed classes of pronouns simply understand those words which are used as a replacement of a noun are pronouns then adverbs what are adverbs an adverb is that word which tells something more about a verb an adjective or an adverb in a sentence when i say he runs i am talking about some person he and mention i mention only the action runs but there is no indication regarding how is the action happening but if i say he runs fast then this word fast tells something more about how he is running he runs fast so fast is an adverb an adverb here in this example this adverb is modifying is saying something more about the verb let us take another example when i say this mango is sweet then in this example sweet is the word which tells something more about the word mango mango is a noun what kind of mango sweet mango but when i say very sweet the mango is very sweet then this word very tells me something more about how sweet very sweet so it shows me the amount the degree of sweetness of the mango and that's why that word very is adverb here this adverb very shows the amount of sweetness of the mango so mango is a noun what kind of mango sweet mango so what is sweet we will see in the next slide and that sweetness how much sweetness is indicated by the word very so very is adverb when i say she ran very fast then here fast is an adverb as we saw just now so fast indicates fast is adverb which takes talk takes uh, talk something more about the action of running runs fast and how much fast then very fast so fast itself was adverb and when we add a word very then how fast that is indicated by the word very and that's why very is also adverb so three examples are given to show how an adverb acts in a sentence an adverb can say something more about a verb an adjective or an adverb what are adjectives go back to the previous example the mango is sweet mango is a noun and this noun something more becomes clear about the noun mango when we say the mango is sweet when i say the mango is ripe the mango is yellow the mango is green then as i go on changing these words then the status of the noun mango also undergoes change a boy and a small boy when we add this word small then when we add this word small then this word boy becomes more clear boy small boy that's why small is adjective prepositions what are prepositions this is the next class those words which show the relation between one noun or pronoun in respect to the other noun or pronoun is called preposition the teacher puts 
his spectacles on the table take two nouns spectacle and table now when we listen to this sentence the teacher puts his spectacles on the table then we come to know about not only about not only that there is a teacher not only that the teacher puts or does something not only that the teacher puts his spectacles but we also come to know that where does he put his spectacles so spectacles and table are two examples are two words and it shows that what is on what is it that spectacles are on the table or table is on the spectacles so this word on is a preposition which shows that in what relation does the word spectacle stand to the table so that is a preposition here are some more examples of uh, prepositions conjunction what is a conjunction a conjunction is a word that joins two words or two sentences and or but though since as however if these all are conjunctions interjections interjection is that word which expresses some sudden feeling some sudden expression oh oh ouch wow all these are expressions and these are interjections so these are the eight basic parts classes in which words are categorized now there are phrase structure rules here one small example is given look at the noun phrase the boy here there are two words the and boy boy is a noun and along with the boy the is used so there are it is a case of more than two words and when it is a case of more than two words it is called phrase here in this two words one is noun so it is noun phrase here the is a determiner and boy is noun look at the example the boy in the yard now here noun phrase the boy in the yard determiner noun pp is given then this pp is divided in p and noun phrase pp is past participle past participle there is one past participle past participle phrase pp is divided further in two parts in is a preposition so p is given and the yard the again is a the yard is a noun phrase because it is comprised of two words the and yard in that also the is determiner and yard is noun so this is how the classification can occur now the boy in the yard is classified this way look at this took the money now it is verb phrase because there is one verb in it it's a phrase in which there is one verb phrase why because there are more than one words so it is verb phrase in this verb phrase there is one verb and one noun phrase took is a verb the money is a noun phrase in the money there is the determiner and noun money is a noun took the money from the bank see this arrangement took the money from the bank this is a complete verb phrase this verb phrase is classified verb took is a verb the money is a noun phrase there is one determiner one noun the money then then there is participle phrase present uh, prepositional phrase there is one preposition and there is one noun phrase from is a preposition and in noun phrase the is a determiner and is a noun some more structure is given here the old tree swayed in the wind look at this in this example 
in this sentence s there are two phrases one noun phrase and one verb phrase what is there in noun phrase there is one determiner one adjective and one noun the is determiner old is adjective and tree is noun now try to understand if you did not know that what is a verb what is a noun and what is an adjective then providing this structure would be of no use to you because it would not make any sense to you you do not know what is noun you do not know what is verb you do not know what is adjective and that's why basic understanding of parts of speech is required because as i told you that it is expressed in codes these are codes and these codes you won't understand unless and under, uh, unless and until you know what is a verb what is a noun what is an adjective and what is a preposition the sentence is divided classified this way the old tree swayed in the wind it happens like this phrase structure rules one more example the children put the toy in the boy after these couple of examples if you develop the habit then you also can take an example and classify it this way it is not very difficult if you have some basic understanding then classifying a sentence in phrases and in these minuscule parts is very easy the children put the toy in the box a sentence there is one noun phrase one verb phrase the noun phrase is the children the determiner children is noun under verb phrase there are three parts verb noun phrase and uh, prepositional phrase under verb we have put under noun phrase we have the boy and under prepositional phrase we have one preposition that is in and under noun phrase we have the box see this example the boy saw the man with the telescope some more elements are added and you can go on and on until each word is classified noun phrase verb phrase under verb phrase there is one verb one noun phrase under noun phrase there is one determiner one noun and then there is prepositional phrase prepositional phrase is divided into one preposition and one noun phrase under noun phrase there is one determiner and one noun so this becomes very interesting exercise some more ex these examples are given and uh, uh, whatever we discuss so far can be applied to that and uh, uh, you will enjoy a lot why does the subject tend to precede verb and object now this is a question when we write a sentence why is it important to put the doer of the action in the beginning why do we do that what is the logic it is also equally important a question peter noticed that sally wasn't there she had to attend a class in linguistics in this example see peter now read the sentence without the word peter and try to see what happens noticed that sally wasn't there she had to attend a class in linguistics if someone speaks a sentence of this nature then you don't accept this sentence because who is doing this is missing peter is missing so without peter there is no meaning to the remaining words this is the reason old information helps the hearer to interpret the rest of the utterance so if the word peter is not put then there is no meaning to the remaining words of the sentence the subject can be seen as a grammar tecalized topic here are some word order correlations which are expressed right balancing how does it happen prepositional phrase having a preposition a determiner an adjective and a noun another design is left balancing 
box blue the in prepositional phrase having a noun and adjective a determiner and a preposition mixed balancing here the blue box in see the example relative clause is explained here what is relative clause when we speak a sentence sometimes we add one more sentence in a given sentence so the given sentence becomes your main clause main sentence and out of that in that sentence we have we take one word and in order to say something more about that word we create one more sentence look at this this example i saw the man this is the main sentence i saw the man which man now we are taking this word man which man who is sleeping now this who is sleeping is itself a sentence because this who is a pronoun and is sleeping is a predicate means subject and predicate are available here and it gives us a full sentence so sentence within the sentence that is clause the main sentence is called main clause and the sentence that depends that is generated or created to say something more about one word of that given main sentence that another one is called subordinating clause now what are the important patterns basically our topic is syntax that is basic sentence structure arrangement of words in a sentence there are some basic patterns which are possible and we will look at these here you will see that we have used uh the codes which we have already referred the simplest sentence the simplest pattern is a pattern where there is one subject subject is something someone about which or whom we speak about whom the idea is about whom the idea the sentence is when we say birds then birds become our subject means we have preferred to talk about birds and then we say what these birds do so the first is the subject and then what is the action of that subject that is verb the simplest structure is birds sing birds is our subject and through sing we say what does what do these birds do they sing second important pattern is subject with a verb and a complement what is a complement the word which is required to complete the sense to provide complete understanding to complete the loop of meaning that word is called complement when i say the child is here you can see there are two elements the child and is now the child is our subject is is the verb but it is not like the previous sentence birds sing in that one birds and sing these words were adequate to complete to provide the complete idea but it is not the case here when you say the child is then the sense doesn't complete you have to say something still you have to add a word to complete the loop of meaning and it happens only when you say the child is small the child is happy when you add these words then the listener feels satisfied that okay now the idea is understood so the word which is required to complete the loop of meaning is called complement and in this example he is rich so he is the person we have chosen to speak about is shows is a verb it shows now uh, you might be aware that verbs are of two types sometimes verbs show action sometimes words verbs show condition position 
of the subject when you say he smiles then smiles is the verb which shows the action of he but when you say he is then you indicate the present condition of he when you say he was then you are talking about past condition so those are the verbs he is reach here reach is complement because without reach the sense doesn't complete one more example was already provided then this is also possible subject then verb and then direct object what is object object is the word that receives the action of subject when you say the postman delivers letters in this example the postman is the person that we have chosen to speak about that is our subject then we indicate action of postman there is delivers what does he do delivers gives distributes it is the action and what does he distribute then letters here again you can see that without this word letters the sense does not complete when you say that postman delivers then the question remains unanswered what does the postman deliver unless and until we say letters parcels couriers the sense doesn't complete that's why it is necessary now the question would be that whether to call letters a complement or an object of course an object because when there is a verb like is am are was where then the word which comes after it is a complement but if there is action verb and if some word is required after that to complete the sense then that is object here we had the word delivers it is an action and that's why letters is not complement but it is object next example is that here we have two objects the pattern is subject with verb with indirect object and direct object here i the example is i gave him a lesson now here i gave him a lesson in this example there are two objects one is direct object one is indirect object now if we remove indirect object then the sentence can convey the meaning i gave a lesson this itself is a complete sentence and it conveys meaning but if you remove a lesson then the sentence would be i gave him but the question remains what and that's why a direct object is must in a sentence if there is no indirect object it will do so even in the absence of indirect object the direct object is is competent enough to convey the meaning the fifth most important pattern is a subject with a verb a direct object a preposition and an indirect object here what happens that we have taken a sentence i sent a letter to my father in this example what is done is that we have put direct object first here object is direct object a letter is our direct object and we have put we have placed indirect object after direct object when this is done that first is the subject then is a verb then is direct object and then is indirect object then between direct and indirect object you have to place a preposition if you reverse the order mean subject then verb and then indirect object and then direct object then preposition is not required as we saw in previous example but here because direct object comes first followed by indirect object then preposition is required and we have put two as a preposition here again you can remove to my father and the sentence is self sufficient to convey the meaning i sent a letter but to make the meaning more clear 
we say i sent later to my father one more pattern which is given here is subject then verb and an infinitive the example is i expect to learn english here in this example i is our subject expect is the verb to learn is an infinitive and what to learn english now see this to learn at what place is it it is at the place of the object because our verb is action verb expect after action verb what we get is direct object now what has happened here is that in the place of direct object we have put something which looks like a verb it looks like a verb to learn it looks like verb but here it is doing the work of a noun because it is in the place of direct object or object and in the place of object what we have mostly put we put nouns so a verb like word doing the work of noun so it is infinitive uh, a complete chapter is possible if infinitives are to be explained in detail but what can be said is that infin an infinitive is one such word which is which looks like a verb in appearance but it does the work of a noun so it is verbal noun another name for infinitives is verbal noun now this is the basic understanding of sentence structures as we have seen that if words are not properly arranged then what happens is that sentence becomes clumsy and no meaning is conveyed so important thing is that the user of a language has not only to become familiar with different available structures of sentences but also has to arrange words properly because language does not exist in the external world language is there in the minds of people we listen the idea and it is decoded interpreted analyzed understood within the mind not a, not anywhere in the external world and everyone has similar understanding of prevailing rules in a language and that's why your expression has to match with the design of understanding that the listener has already there in the mind if there is some disorder then the design cannot match the listener cannot understand so the knowledge of syntax is also very very important for language learner moreover these are not the only six structures which are possible in english language this exercise can go on and on on and on on and on if you want to put an adverb then there is specific place for an adverb if you want to put an adjective then there is specific place for an adjective if you want to place a preposition then there is a specific place for a preposition this can be done by taking examples take a sentence see how words are arranged and then break the sentence in different minute parts and you will come to know that how words are arranged so the knowledge of syntax that is word order is basic is fundamental to learning a language and more can be done by taking some more examples these examples even uh, some interactive sites some on some websites some interactive exercises are also possible where some basic understanding is provided you have to study whatever part is given and then there is online exercise you can participate in that exercise you can take the test and see what is your understanding what is your score and i think this is the best way because this information technology has changed the way uh, 
uh, we learn things and uh, information is provided to people. These online resources can be best used and whenever there is a facility then one must use and this is the only way language command can be strengthened. All the best to you. Thank you very much. Sandham All Gujarat Integrated Classroom Satellite Na Madhyam Thi Jodh Thi Kadi Etle Sandham